So if a beginner wood turner came up to me when I'm turning large pieces, so you're probably wondering why I've got this spanner here in front of me. So wood turning and measuring tools go hand in hand. And if you're a beginner in wood turning, you might be watching a lot, a lot of online videos and tutorials, and you see wood turners use all these different tools when they're turning. And it can be quite daunting, and you don't know what they are, they don't, you don't know what they're, what they're used for and what they're called, so you can actually go out and get them yourself. So in this video, I've categorized all my wood turning measuring tools into eight different categories. A lot of them do cross over to aid one, one another, but eight different categories of measuring tools and what they're called, what they're used for, to hopefully help you out from preventing you going through the bottom of your bowls or making your platters too thin or your box lids too loose. So first things first, and I'm gonna knock this out of the way really quickly, and that comes to steel rulers and vernier calipers, plus the humble old tape measure. If you don't wanna go out and purchase a steel ruler, the tape measure just works just as well. Uh, a little handy tip is when you are measuring, sometimes it's this, this thing here, the little end piece is a little bit inaccurate. So what I do sometimes is go to the 100 and measure up from there. So that's just another way of doing things, and that way you can get them a little bit more spot on. When it comes to rulers, sometimes, especially new, newer tapes and things and rulers, the numbers, I can barely see them. Um, and in, I'm in my, in my 30s and my eyesight, I don't know what it is, but the numbers are so small and I just don't even use them. They just go on the shelf. If I was given it, you know, or I'd give them away. Someone else's problem, in a sense. Anyway, vernier calipers. When I use vernier calipers, it's mainly when I'm doing spindle work, but you can also get your measurement lock it in with the little wheel there, the little nut that tightens it up. And then you've got these points here, which act as little pointers. If you're not gonna go out and get a set of dividers, you could use your vernier calipers and use these points here to mark the back of the, la the bowl or the platter or whatever you're turning at the time. One really little tip that I wanna pass on is when you are using these for spindle work, so when you're, when you're turning, and you're gonna use them to measure the thickness width, is to soften these corners here, just these little, little corners there, and that'll prevent from catching and biting into the timber, which we all want to avoid. Yet again, highly suggest getting a set that you can, that you can read really accurately. You can buy vernier calipers now with like a sight glass, so you can see a lot clearer when you're trying to read your calipers. Steel rulers, I have them everywhere, but they're not just for measuring distances and, and links and bits and pieces. I use them for checking platters, the base of platters, and across the feet of bowls and platters. And what I mean by that is, for example, I have this platter just here, which I turned last week. That's my dinner plate now. It's looking pretty good, I think. Anyway, so I get a ruler and I'm turning the foot of the platter, which is this part here. And I wanna make sure it's not gonna bottom out onto the table, so it's not gonna roll around. So I get my steel ruler and I place it across the base and I make sure I've got clear daylight, and there's a lot of daylight there, underneath that foot so I can see. But I don't, I not only use it for that as well, when I want something to be nice and flat, it's got a, steel rules have a really good flat straight edge on them. So I hold it across the face of platters and pieces that I'm turning, and that allows me to see the nice flat surface. So next up on the list is the humble old depth drill. Some little pointers that I will say when you are using your depth drill, it's literally a drill bit in a handle glued into it, quick little project you could make for yourself, is you can use a hacksaw blade and make little markings, like little increments up the drill bit if you choose so, or use your permanent marker and just mark the side of it or masking tape. When you are using it, just eyeball it up to how deep you want to go on the side of your blank and then hold your thumb there or use your marker that you've made previously. And then from the centre and then drive it into the centre. So I'm just going to hold my thumb there so I know where I'm going or how deep. Right, so that is the humble old depth drill. So next up on the list is my angle finding jigs and when I want to mark my spindle blanks that I know that I'm exactly in the center or I want to go and check my bowl gouges and make sure my jig settings when I'm sharpening are spot on and still good to go especially when I'm freehand sharpening things can get a little bit 
inaccurate. But we'll start with the Vicmark DNS Manta gauge. I mainly use it for this little setting down here and this setting up here. How I use, what I mean by that is I run that little setting there, that little jig into the bottom of my recesses to check the recess when I'm turning platters or if I'm making a recess in something. Now when I use this little bottom section here is when I check my tenons, I just slot it in there like that and that gives me a nice accurate reading on how my tenons are shaped up. Next tool that I use is a little angle finder. So I'll just grab the scraper here and we're gonna place that long piece there and run it up the front of the tool like so. And then that gives us the reading up the top here of what that tool is sharpened to. So that's a little angle finder that you can use and you could use it for a lot of other things as well. The next tool is the Vicmark DNS uh, Gouge Master that I bought here in Australia. Same principle, you can go around the sides of it and find out the different angles that you are using your sharpening jigs of on. Uh, and it's just a little fail safe for yourself as well. But not only that, you can use this to find the center as I've marked out just here. When you wanna mark up the base of your spindle blanks, it's just a super easy way of doing things and then away you go. Also, before we move on, if you want more information about the, sorry, the DNS Manta gauge, I'll link a video in the description below because I found it tricky finding out info about all these different little things located around the jig. Um, but Glenn Lucas has made a video on those increments and everything like that because the instructions are in German, but uh, he goes into great depth on that video. So I'll put that below if this jig interests you at all and you want to find out a little bit more info. So next up on the list is spindle turning measuring tools. And I will also talk about the spanner that I've got here in front of me. So these are called the little spring calipers, automotive mobs use them as well as people turning on metal lathes. Everyone uses them, they've been around since you know, the arc. A really accurate way that I like to use them is I get my measurement first on my vernier calipers, or you just use your vernier calipers like we discussed before. You use it, hold it, and drop it over the top of the piece that you're turning. But if you want to just use your vernier calipers and a steel ruler, you can also do that as well to get your measurement, and then you open up or close down the spring calipers as you need. The vernier calipers are a nice accurate way because you've got something sort of hard to measure up against, those little points just there. Round the ends off on the inside so they don't catch onto your piece of timber when you are using them to uh, get that accurate, accurate measurement when you're doing your peeling cuts or something like that. So you're probably wondering why I've got this spanner here in front of me. And the reason being is it's just another way of measuring when you're turning spindle blanks and pieces on the lathe and you want to get a known accurate measurement and you don't have a set of spring calipers, you can just use a spanner or a wrench or something like that because that is a known diameter in there. Have those little edges rounded so it doesn't catch, but and that slots over the top, you know that that measurement there is what is on the spanner. So just an alternative way of doing things. Next up on the list is moisture meters. And these are super important because as wood turners, woodworkers, we need to know the moisture content on the products that we're selling or the products that we're turning because, for example, you've branded the bottom of it, you've signed your name on there or put your company brand on there and then you sell that platter to someone and then they take it home and have everyone around and then next minute it's rolling around on the table because it's all warped out of shape and they turn it over and then they see your name and your company brand on there and it's just embarrassing. And not only does the person that bought it see it, everyone else around them sees it. I'm not trying to scare you, it's just the reality of what we do. Moisture meters are really important. I have heard that Wagner make a really good moisture meter. So do your research and, and see what you can afford and, and what's going on, possibly secondhand. I bought these moisture meters. I believe they were about 80 bucks or something like that. I've got two of them. Uh, so I do an average, so I get one, probe it in. They have the pins on the top stick it in and another one I stick it in and just get an average to make sure uh, what I'm about to turn and sell is down to the moisture content what it needs to be for my climate. Now that will de be dependent on where you live in the world so just do your research when you are turning products what the moisture content needs to be before it steps out your shop and 
goes to its final destination. So yes, moisture meters, really important. And that's why I wanted to include it in this wood turning measuring tool video. So next. So next measuring tools up on the list is dividers and markers. And what I mean by that, I'll first start with these. They're a massive set of uh, dividers. I don't use them, but I was given them to me by a veteran wood turner who has now passed away. And I just wanted to include them in this video because it uh, keeps his memory going. So thank you. These dividers here I use on a regular basis. And as well as you can probably see another couple of sets up on the wall. And how I use them is by measuring my mortise and tenons before I cut them. And what I mean by that, I just measure up the chuck jaws, and these are open too far, but I measure up the chuck jaws and then transcribe that measurement onto the back of the bowl, which gives a nice, accurate, centered mark for me to go and then process and turn that into a tenon or a recess. That will then fit those chuck jaws in expansion or contraction, absolutely perfectly centered. So when you turn it around, it spins beautifully true. And now when I'm processing timber and I need to make measurements to transcribe onto the blanks, these are a large set of dividers that I have sticky taped a, a permanent marker to the bottom. And that allows me to scribe circles when I'm not using my templates onto the pieces of timber when I cut them on the bandsaw. Now the next marking tool that I use is the Stanley Compass. And how I use this is by mainly measuring up for the face plate to go on my blanks. I measure up the diameter of the face plate, halve it, and then, sorry, I need that back, and then get my ruler. And now you'll be able to repeat this measurement for all the blanks that you're about to turn or attach the face plate to. Just get that measurement, mark it on the piece of timber, transcribe that measurement onto your Stanley Compass trace that circle around like that, then get your face plate and then eyeball that up so it's matching. So the outside edge is right on point for that line that you've scribed and then you'll be dead center and then you can screw your face plate off and away you go. Right, so do you remember at the start of the video when I mentioned a tool that will prevent you from going through the bottom of your bowl as long as you use it frequently when you're turning bowls? I'll talk about this jig, real cool jig in just a second. So this is a tool that I use from, it's to check the thickness of the bottom of when you're turning bowls. And it's, I'll link a video in the description on how to make it and some other videos or little contraptions that you can make that can save you time as well as money in below this video in the description there. But it's a bit of ply with a hole drilled in it to the diameter of your dowel. Put that in there. That can go, that goes into the bottom of your bowl like so. So I've put the chuck on it because I wanted to show you something. You hold the front, so the dowel's into the bottom of the bowl, hold the dowel steady, then place the flat piece of ply up against the face of your bowl. So then you know that's the depth of where your cut is inside your bowl. And I get a ruler sometimes and place it along the base of the bowl in front of the chuck or in front of the tenon that's how much more you have to go to reach the bottom of your bowl. You can also start like this and then get your, not an octopus, right? You can start like that and then say you want the bottom of your bowl to be, I don't know, 10, 10, mil, 10 mil to the bottom and then hold that. And then you can make a little mark on either side of your dowel or get a little peg and then you know that that is how deep you need to go. So you can have that set sitting aside. So when you're turning away, you can just constantly go, oh yep, I've got a little bit more to go. See that gap there? I've got a little bit more to go. So I'll keep turning, turning, turning until obviously you go right, right, oh there I am, stop. And then you also got that added insurance of your tenon below. And that's not how you have the chuck drawer sitting on a tenon, just a little side note. Now, the next tool that I wanna talk about is the golden ratio ruler. And I made a full video about this and I'll link it down below as well. But really good for wood turners as well as woodworkers, guitar makers and things, is these two measurements, when divided by three is that measurement there. The overall distance between these two is one third, which is that there. And that works out perfect for wood turners because all our bases of our bowls and things like that, mainly bowls, should be one third of the overall diameter. But I also use this when I'm making vases 
and I want to know where it'll look really nice to sweep that edge up, I can use this measurement to find where I'll bring, I'll start bringing that or rounding the shoulder over to make a nice looking vase. Well, it's pleasing to the eye. And I'll show you how this works. So this measurement, measurement should be at my eye line here. So, or at my eye, and I can't see what I'm doing here, but give me a sec. This is gonna be funny. So that marker there should be pointing at my eye. And if I open it up, this distance here should be the length of my hand. So I'll put it in the corner of my elbow there, line that up, and then that should be the distance of my hand, as you can see there. So really cool when you wanna turn bowls and you, you don't wanna keep using your ruler to measure the diameter of the bowl. You just get this guy, get the diameter of the bowl, and then that's the foot. Super cool little tool. When I'm turning large pieces, uh, bowls and platters and things, I use these calipers to check the thickness and how much room I have left. These set here, I was given to a gentleman who passed away, a different gentleman, and uh, I use them frequently when I'm turning really large pieces, especially vases, and I need to get right into the bottom of the piece. They're very simple how they made. Their homemade set is you obviously place, place them inside like that and around the back or wherever you, want to, wherever you want to check. And then from the front to the back is the thickness of that piece. So thank you very much for allowing me to have these. These other three calipers I also use. I mainly use these ones. They're pretty much the same, but these calipers here, they have more of a sweeping curve in them. So it allows me to get up and over the top of bowls and things. So it allows me to get up and over and then that is the measurement just, just here. I've spoken about before in my other videos that when I'm turning platters, I leave the chuck drawers slightly open. And then when I'm measuring them, I can get around the back of the platter and then that measurement just here. Not my dinner plate, give me a break. So when I wanna measure the thickness of the platter, I just come back here and I know that that is the thickness just there. Fairly self-explanatory how they use. I just had someone in my comments ask me what they were. So just not everyone is all over what we do as wood turners. So uh, it's important for us to, to share our knowledge of our beloved craft. So if a beginner wood turner came up to me and said, Keza, what measuring tools should I go and get if I'm just getting started and I want to reduce my risk of making mistakes or going through the bottom or through the side of my bowls and platters and things. This is what I would tell them or tell you to go and sort of look out for. And mind you, the only new tool here is this here, here are these. The rest I found through online Facebook Marketplace and other woodworkers, wood turners, selling their tools. A good set of dividers, keeping one side sharp, one side blunt, because that makes all your mortise and tenons when uh, mounting pieces onto the chuck jaws. You can also use them to scribe out circles when you're cutting pieces on the bandsaw. So many uses. Also, marking up the side of your bowl if you wanna do beads and coves, and very, very handy tool. A set of calipers, so bowl calipers, platter calipers, to check the thickness, as well if it's a smaller bowl, to make sure you're not gonna punch through the bottom. Uh, of that bowl and ruin all your hours of work. So I'll put an affiliate link in the description below, but if you can find them cheaper somewhere else, fill your boots. Uh, but these are by Tay Tools of Amazon. But good set of them. A steel ruler or a measuring tape, but I found a steel ruler super easy because it slips into your smock and you're away. A set of vernier calipers. If you don't get a spring set of calipers, a set of vernier calipers, and heaps of old fellas will have these, heaps of old blokes, men or women, in their workshops. They'll have these, and super handy when you wanna do your, or start your spindle work, but they can also double up as a set of dividers by using the back like we spoke about. So a vernier calipers, and go and make yourself a depth gauge like we spoke about. Homemade depth gauge, link that video in the description below. The video on the right here is another video I made about all the tools that I use on the outside, inside of my workshop that help me speed up my processes and there are other little tools that help that main tool. Go check that video out there. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate your time in uh, watching my videos. I will talk to you all directly. Cheers, bye.